Hello everybody, my name is Eva Helps with Siler Design Solutions and today we're going to talk a little bit about the customization you can do inside AutoCAD. There are a lot of different customization tools and so we're just going to talk about a few today. And we are going to start off by heading to the Options dialog box. You can get there several different ways like most things inside AutoCAD. You can type in Options and you'll see it pops up in the menu there to go to options. You can also go up to the AutoCAD icon in the upper left hand corner and go to options here. Or you can go to the view tab on your ribbon and go to the interface panel here and just select this little arrow. All of those will bring you to the options dialog box, which popped up here in a different screen, just pulling it over. So, and inside the options dialog box, you'll see you have a number of different tabs up here. We are going to start with talking about some options on the display tab. So inside the display tab, in the window elements little box here, uh, the first thing you can see is color theme. So some people prefer the dark uh, theme of AutoCAD. You can also choose light. If we select apply down here, you'll see that changes the background of the display, including the ribbon, the properties, uh, command prompt, and all the background kind of light versus dark. So that is your option. You can apply either dark or a light background. A couple other options have these boxes you can check on or off display scroll bars in drawing. So if you select that and turn it on, you'll notice at the bottom of your display screen and the side of your display screen here, now instead of zoom, you could scroll up and down or side to side on these scroll bars. I'm not a fan of that. I like to use the zoom and the pan, so I'm going to go ahead and deselect that and select apply so those don't show. Uh, you can use large buttons for the toolbars. I'm going to go ahead and keep that selected. You can resize the ribbon icons to standard sizes. That would change these icons here on the ribbon. And you can show tooltips, so you'll notice if I hover over this, my tooltip pops up. This is super handy. I want to go ahead, leave that on, and hop out of options. So even if you hover over anything on the ribbon, anything on the quick access bar up here, you'll see these little tooltips pop up. And they give you an idea of what will happen if you select that command or that icon. And it even gives you the shortcut. You could type into the command prompt. So I think it's handy. If you don't know a command or a tool or what, what something does, it'll pop up a little overview of, of what that can do for you. So number of seconds before display. So depending on maybe you don't want it to pop up every one second, you want to hover over for two seconds so it's not popping up when you're just looking through things. You can also choose whether you want to show the shortcut keys, which were those uh, command prompt or the function keys, or in this case, it's alt plus key or control plus key. Uh, so it shows you, you can use, deselect those and it won't show that, or it won't show the extended tooltips. And then it asks you how long you want to display that. Uh, you also have the option to deselect the rollover tooltips, display file tabs. So here, you also have two options colors and fonts. This will change the colors of a bunch of different elements inside of the interface here. So in the model space, you can see down in this preview the different things that will change. So if we change that to magenta, you can see the background would be changed to magenta. Along with the crosshairs, if you change those, maybe you like having those 
crosshair is a brighter color or something easier to see other than white. Um, if you look through here, the grid lines, major and minor, axis lines, all sorts of different elements that you can change the color of depending on your preference. Decided, oh, I'm not really a fan of that. You can always restore the defaults of those as well. You see, you also have the option to change in the sheet or layout space and some other 3D options to manipulate inside the block editor, the background, and the way things look inside there, and even in the command line and plot preview. So a lot of different options to customize inside of your user interface there. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that and come down to the next little box here for layout elements. This gives you the option to display the layout and model tabs that would be down here to display the printable area, display paper background. So these layout elements are talking about if you switch over to the layout tab here. So whether you want the page to be displayed, whether you want the page setup manager to pop up automatically when you create a new layout, like so. If I created a new layout and had that selected, it would pop up automatically. Um, and just some of the other layout elements. Back to model space. We're not going to talk about the display resolution or the display performance, and we're going to jump right down here to the crosshair size. Here we have the crosshair size, which if you change that, you can make your crosshairs as large or as small as you want. I'm going to go ahead and change them back to 10 so you can see the difference. So depending on if you like them to extend throughout your project, kind of a, a guide as far as helping you draw, you can change the size of your crosshairs. And then you could also control how your XREFs are displayed, whether they're faded in the background more so. The default here is 45 for AutoCAD. Kind of gives it a slight fade, but still there in place. So you can know whether you're looking at something that's inside that XREF or something inside the drawing. So that's a general overview of the display tab. We're going to hop over to the user preferences and take a peek at a couple of the customization tools inside here. Since we're mainly talking about the display and how to change and customize that, um, we aren't going to touch on everything inside of the user preference tab here, but quick overview, right click customization that allows you to change what happens when you right click inside a command or inside AutoCAD. And we're going to hop to the block editor settings since we're again talking more display customization. Inside your block editor, you can change what that looks like by changing the colors of the parameters, the grips, the parameter, text alignment, any of the constraints, statuses. And again, you can always reset the values if you decide they aren't working out. So if you wanted to see something displayed differently inside the block editor, this is where you would do that. Now we're going to select the drafting tab up here inside the options dialog box and take a look at some of the settings inside here. So you, for the auto snap, you can change the color of that. You can change what that looks like. You can also change the size of that auto snap marker. Just by sliding these along this bar that changes how that aperture and auto snap marker size are displayed. A couple other options are these buttons down here. If you select the drafting tooltip settings, you just have the option to see how those display differently. So if you wanted the tooltip appearance to change the color, again, that brings you back up to the drawing window colors, which we saw in the display tab. Uh, you can also change the size of those boxes when they pop up. When you have your dynamic input set up um, and displayed and turned on, maybe you want them to be more transparent so they're not the forefront of your drawing. And that's again, total user preference, up to you. The last thing we're going to take a look at inside the options dialog box here is the selection tab. 
So again, you have these sliders to select the pick box size and the grip size. So if you select an object and it has grips, which you can hover over for options or manipulate with those grips, in here is where you could set those. You can also set the grip colors and kind of uh, customize that and how they display and a little bit of their behavior inside here. Same with the selection mode for the pick box. You can use shift to add to the selection. You can use object grouping your preference, what you're used to, what you find easiest to work with. So those are a few settings you can change inside the options dialog box where you can manipulate how it visually looks in CAD and how you use it in CAD and whatever makes most sense to you. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the tool palettes and how you can change how they display on your screen and manipulate those to help you view the AutoCAD display how you'd like to. So here we have the properties tool palette. It is docked to the left side of my display screen currently, but if you go to the top and you drag it out, you'll notice it can be a floating tool palette and you can move that around your screen. You can use these two arrows to roll it up and hide it. If you hover over there, you see the auto hide. And now you have more space on your screen to work inside your actual uh, model space. So that's one thing you can do with your tool palette. You can also click this gear here and go to the settings where you can either anchor it to the left or anchor it to the right. And you'll see then it automatically goes to the side that which you anchor it on. And again, it does the auto hide where when you hover over it, it rolls out so you have access to that. And when you go off of it, you have the full visual of your screen and it just gives you more space to do your drafting. You can also change the transparency of it, which if it's docked or uh, floating in the screen kind of allows you to see through it to the background, which also still viewing those properties. So just depending on your preference on how you like to work with your screen, if you only have one screen or if you have multiple screens, maybe you put it on your other screen, there is a lot of different options depending on how you want to utilize your screen space. So you can do this with all tool palettes, not just the properties tool palette. I was just using this as an example. So some options for you there. You can also change the size of your tool palette. If you do have it floating, you can hover over the edges to use those expansion tools and make it a different size. If it's on another screen, you like chances are you might want to make it bigger. You can also with this, when you change the size, um, just allows you easier access to change those properties inside that properties tool palette for the objects you have selected. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and talk about the command prompt where you can actually pull this out and have it floating. You can also dock it, which is usually the most common way to view it in your screen. A lot of people have it on the bottom. Docked, there we go. The you can close it out with the X, which we're not going to do right now, but you can also go, you can dock it wherever, whether it's at the top or the bottom, or again, whatever the user preference is to utilize your screen space, how you like it. Now down here, if you select the wrench, you can go to the input settings where you can change whether it's autocorrect, autocomplete, um, search content, and some other input setting options. So if you type in say OP, which is for options, and you have the autocomplete, you'll see it pops up with different auto uh, AutoCAD commands that start with those um, letters and you can autocomplete from there. You can also just go to the options from this wrench. So yet another way to go to the options dialog box, which is where we were manipulating some of these settings earlier in this video. So today was just kind of a quick overview of some of the many, many settings that you can change inside AutoCAD to customize how you are using like the drafting tools and kind of utilizing that space on your screen, depending on the tool palettes, um, some of the other, other screens that you can pull in and out and manipulate throughout AutoCAD. So we appreciate you watching. So if you have any questions about any of those settings, or if you have a setting in mind that you're like, oh, how do I change this? Feel free to reach out to us at Siler Design Solutions, either um, by emailing us at cadtechnical at silerins.com 
or checking out our other blogs on siler-ds.com forward slash blog. We will be happy to answer any of your questions about this or any other CAD questions you might have. So until then, thanks for watching.